Howdy. My name is Matt Boche, and I work for Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. I am the County Extension Agent Agriculture for Victoria County, Texas. And we are about to enter into my backyard to discuss basic backyard gardening. So come along. As we walk into the, my backyard, you can see you don't need to have an elaborate backyard or an extremely large space to do vegetable gardening. Today we're going to talk a little bit about my composting or keyhole garden and talk about the basics of how to do that, how to set it up, and what things grow well in it. One thing that you want to do to make sure that your soil nutrition is right is to make sure that you take a soil sample. And the way to do that is uh, to collect the sample and put it in the appropriate bags and send it to a soil testing facility. Uh, there is a lab at Texas A&M University and you can go to soiltesting.tamu.edu and you can download the form that you would need for that. We do provide soil sample bags at our office or you can use your own bag but you would take that sample, send it off and in about five to seven business days they'll send you back that soil sample report. In that report it will tell you what the nutritional requirements are for the crop that you're growing and in this case it would be vegetables. And if you didn't understand how to interpret those results, then you would need to give me a call or a county extension agent a call and they can help you get the soil nutrition just right for that garden to be as productive as it can be. Okay, so we are, uh, I'm sitting in what, I, what we call my keyhole garden or my composting garden. And as you can see, the area that I'm sitting in is the key portion of it that you can actually walk into and get close enough to do whatever weeding you wanted to do or to actually fill the composter. And the composter is filled with green waste that you might have weeded out of the garden. It's also filled with food waste, but specifically non-protein based food waste. We do not want to put protein based food waste in there because that would attract rodents to your garden and they would tear it up. So we don't want to do that. And then over time, with water and soil and other things that you add to it, it breaks down and it creates organic matter. And it leaches that organic matter and that nutrition out through the bottom of the composter to all of the plants that you see that are growing in this garden. My garden was planted at, uh, on February the 27th and I have not fertilized the garden at all. And you can see how deep green it is and obviously taking up nutrition from the composting unit. And the composting unit is simple. It's just a you know, wire made into a cylinder and it's uh, anchored to the ground with uh, two by fours that, are, that were uh, sledgehammered down so they anchors it to them and that's it. And it has the ability to, to let air flow through it and, and when the rain comes you get that water flowing down through it to help break up that organic matter. But we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a composting garden and a little bit about this keyhole garden and you don't have to have a very big space this is this is only about 11 feet by 8 feet and uh, you, as you can see as we get up and kind of walk around that we have a lot of different stuff planted we'll start here with we've got a simple uh, banana pepper we've also got an, a bell pepper that's got a nice fruit on it already you go around the edges here, you've got the onions along the, the edges there. They're fast growing. They uh, grow straight up. You can plant a lot of stuff right next to them. They don't take up much space. And then you can see you've got the bush type beans here. As we go this way, you've got the bush style beans. And we walk around this way. There's plenty of bush type beans. And then we get to this simple trellis system or piece of fence basically we've got the cucurbit which is a cucumber in the cucurbit family you can see it's flowering and will very soon be putting on cucumbers and we we train it to trellis up this way so it stays off of what's growing behind it and growing behind it is a tomato and this is the oldest tomato I've planted I planted five different tomatoes they're all different varieties and I planted them at different times because I want the fruit to come off at different times so we have a longer harvest interval. That's what we're looking for, to harvest for as long as we possibly can. As we walk our way this way, we see this is this, the, the tomato that I planted not that long ago. You can see it's the smallest. And then 
they kind of are staggered as we planted them as time went on. But you can see they're all flowering. They're all setting fruit for the most part. And you can see they're setting fruit back over here. And they've got flowers in all of the new growth as they continue to go up. Then we come back to the edges again. And even in a small space, you're going to be at battle with weeds, with insects, and with disease. And as you can see, you've got bean common mosaic virus that started in this. This is a bush type bean. I probably will not grow this variety again because of this. It's got the mosaic virus that you can see the curling of the leaves there. But good news is it's loaded with flowers. And you can already see that we're going to have lots of green beans, at least on one first picking, even with the mosaic virus. So I probably won't plant green beans in this area again next year because of the mosaic virus, and I won't plant that variety again. As we move our way down this way, some of your larger zucchini type squash, you can see we've got a one large fruit setting, we've got a smaller fruit that's setting, we've got all the flowers, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 flowers if they all set fruit this is going to be a good harvest first harvest off this one plant but there are three separate zucchini squashes in this small area right here all of which have fruit on them fruit right there excuse me and then there's fruit on the other one back here and we also continue to run the green bush green beans all along this edges as you see here and then we come back over on this side now you can see where the onions pick up along the edges here and the green beans are behind those. So I wanted to give you just a quick overview of a simple garden. This one happens to be a composting garden, a small type garden, but there's going to be big yields in this garden. So you can plant in a small space if you design it and you take the time to plant it correctly and you take good care of it, it can grow and it'll do well for it and it'll produce lots of vegetables for your family. So get outside, try some gardening, whether it's large or small, whether it's in a five gallon bucket or whether it's in a half acre in the ground or if it's a or maybe even a composting garden. Gardening is fun, it's good for your health and you're creating vegetables that your family can eat. If you have any questions about what we talked about, you can give me a call at the Victoria County Extension Office at 361-575-4581 or you can drop a question in the text chat box of this video and I'll be happy to get back to you just as soon as I can. Once again, Matt Boshe, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, Victoria County. Backyard gardening is simple and fun.